Praise the Lamb of God, beloved. We're glad to be able to share with you one more time in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, concerning the gospel. I am Dr. Lyle Lee from Rhema Theological Seminary. You can reach us at rtseminary at yahoo.com for further communications in the Word of God. Today I want to speak about the secret coming of Christ. Most people in Christendom preach and teach the second coming of Christ. And yet in their theology of the second coming, they seem like they're not able to give any time when the Lord will return at his second coming. Although Jesus Christ stated the exact time when he will return concerning his second coming, but he also stated the time that he would come for his secret coming. They are two different events, three and a half years difference between the secret coming and the second coming. We find therefore in Matthew 24 in verses 29 and 30 the answer to the second coming of Christ. Jesus says he will not return until the end of the great tribulation. That's the master preaching and teaching now about his own second coming. He will not return until the end of the great tribulation. The seven year tribulation is broken into two periods. The first three and a half is a time of peace for Israel when they go back to animal sacrificing. According to Daniel 9, and 27 and then at the end of that three and a half year peace with Israel they will be crying peace and safety because they've enjoyed three and a half years of animal sacrificing the Antichrist will commit the abomination of desolation he will make desolate the land of Israel he will destroy or annihilate all Jews the prophecy for the Jews coming back to Israel will be fulfilled after three and a half years of the signing of this seven-year peace treaty. Once three and a half years are fulfilled, all Jews will have returned from all quarters of the earth. And the reason they are returning is because the law of Moses says they must animal sacrifice for their sins. Now what we are seeing today is not the fulfillment of prophecy, Jews coming back to Israel. That is not the fulfillment of prophecy. What will drive all Jews back to Israel is the signing of the peace treaty and their agreement with the Antichrist to go back to animal sacrificing. According to the law of Moses, they can only do this in Jerusalem and it must be done by a Levitical priest. This is the prophecy being fulfilled that drives all the Jews back to Israel. Then when the Antichrist has them all in one place, he'll slaughter them. After three and a half years of peace, they will cry peace and safety according to the prophets. And the Apostle Paul also teaches this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. When they cry peace and safety, sudden destruction. Then we still have three and a half years of great tribulation. At the end, therefore, of the seven-year tribulation, according to Matthew 24, verse 29 and 30, is the second coming of Christ. The Lord will return with tens of thousands of his saints, according to Jude, and also multitudes of angels, according to Matthew 16, verse 27. And we realize as you read down there that you understand the second coming has nothing to do with the secret coming. The secret coming is three and a half years before the second coming. We find therefore that the secret coming of Christ involves the first rapture. At the first rapture only the bride will be raptured while the body of Christ will be left in the earth to go through this great tribulation. 
The Bible teaches this in many places concerning Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. While the wise virgins are taken away, the foolish virgins in the kingdom are left behind. Notice all the virgins are in the kingdom. Therefore, they are all saved. However, Christ refuses to marry the foolish virgin. He comes back in the secret coming of Christ to rapture the bride. This is also seen in Joel chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Now there is a difference between Zion and Samaria. There's a difference between the 12 tribes of Israel and the two tribes of Israel, which make up Zion. Basically, in Jerusalem, Benjamin and Judah made up Zion. But in Samaria, the other 10 tribes of Israel, amen, made up the body of Israel. Or another term for that is the body of Moses. And we find, therefore, that the trumpet is only blown in Zion. Two tribes out of 12 will hear this trumpet call. It's a gospel awakening, actually, that Jesus is coming. Only two out of 12 prepare themselves. Those two make up the bride. According to Joel 2, verse 16, 15 and 16, the bride is comprised of babies that are sucking the breast. They're still on milk. It's also made up of little children. And it's also adults. So the bride is not just very mature Christians. It's babies. People that just recently got saved. But they are walking in the light as much as they have light. And so the bride will be raptured at the secret coming of Christ. The first rapture is at the secret coming. Therefore, the Apostle Paul teaches in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 3, The Lord Jesus shall appear as a thief in the night. When he appears as a thief in the night, he's not taking the body of Christ. He is not rapturing the whole church, beloved. He is only rapturing a remnant in the church. A small remnant will be raptured. Now in Joel 2, it's only 2 out of 12. But if we read it from uh, the percentage in Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13, concerning the 10 virgins, it's 50% of the church, the five wise, end up getting raptured. Rather than um, the Joel prophecy where it's only 2 out of 12, which is a less percentage of the church that will be raptured in the bride. So we've got to realize that not every believer that's in the body of Christ will make it to become the bride of Christ. This is only one more of the conditional promises in the Bible. Now the Bible is filled with conditional promises. If you don't meet the condition, you will not marry Christ. Today the entire church is engaged to Christ. But even our engagement doesn't guarantee us a wedding. Our engagement only guarantees us that we have the opportunity, like all other Christians, to marry Christ. But when we read Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13, when the sound is made, the bridegroom comes. It's the same thing as Joel 2, 15 and 16. The trumpet is blown. That's the sounding of the bridegroom coming. Only the bride hears the call, or hears the trumpet. They wake up from their sleep. They make sure that they are walking in the light. They make sure they have oil in their lamp. And because they have now met certain conditions, they qualify to go in the first rapture and to become a part of the bride of Christ. If a Christian refuses to meet the conditions, then as a foolish virgin, he will be left behind. There will be no rapture for that Christian and no marriage for that Christian to the Lamb of God. 
Christ will refuse to marry the foolish virgins. In the secret coming of Christ, when the bride of Christ is raptured, they will attend a wedding feast for the next three and a half years. This time is known on the earth as the Great Tribulation. So when all hell is breaking out on the earth, after the war in Revelation chapter 12, Michael and his angels fight the dragon and cast him down. And in Revelation 12, when the devil is cast out of the first heaven, because today that's where his throne is, in the first heaven, according to Isaiah 14, verses 12 to 14, the throne of Satan is in the first heaven or the clouds. When the devil is cast out of the first heaven in the time known as the Great Tribulation, then Revelation 12 says he knows he has a short time. The short time is listed as 1,260 days or exactly three and a half years on a Jewish calendar. So we realize that this great tribulation where Satan and all one-third of the angels are cast down to the earth, they will then begin to possess, Satan will possess the Antichrist body, the other demons will possess other leaders around the world and other people around the world. And so during that time, known as the great tribulation, that's when the wedding of the Lamb will be taking place in the heavenlies. Now, although the foolish virgins will be crying, Lord, Lord, open to us, they will not enter the wedding feast. Because they denied Christ on the earth by living godly, they refused to keep commandments, they refused to follow the doctrines. As a result of becoming a fool, they've been left behind. They've missed the first rapture. They've forfeited their inheritance to become a part of the bride of Christ. The secret coming, therefore, will take away the bride. The second coming will take away the body. There is a second rapture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, for the entire body of Christ, whether wise or foolish, at the end of the great tribulation, at the second coming of Christ. Then we which are alive and remain shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the dead in Christ shall rise first at the second coming. There will be the first resurrection. And then we which are alive and remain, whether fool or wise, we shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now basically I can guarantee you, beloved, at the end of the great tribulation, the entire body will be without spot and wrinkle. The great tribulation is actually an iron, an iron to get the wrinkles out. And every fool will either die in that great tribulation or they'll become wise and they'll find the wilderness. I pray the grace of God minister life under your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen.